Hey everyone, the questions that you're going to be hearing from this Berlitz test are the questions that I heard three years ago when I took my Berlitz test with an American administrator. Of course, I added more questions to it just to make it reach up to 15 minutes, but majority of the questions that you're going to be hearing were asked by the administrator of Berlitz. Without further ado, let's begin. Hi, can you give me your name and number, please? Uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and my full name is Candice Mackerel. Thank you. How are you today, Candice? I'm doing great. Thank you. Perfect. Now, before we start this test, let me just explain to you the instructions and what you should expect during this test. So, overall, the test will last for 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. This will test your fluency in English and your ability to speak the language in daily conversation. Throughout this test, you will have to answer my questions in English. The questions will be all about yourself and your opinions about certain topics. Think of this as a conversation between us. I will be asking you questions about yourself mm -hmm. and you will answer them like you would in a daily conversation. So it's basically just like a conversation between us. Now, before we begin... Do you have any questions for me? No, I think I'm good. Everything's clear. All right. Why don't you start by telling me something about yourself? Anything, even if it's not work-related. Okay, so I graduated a computer programming course, and I have been in the call center industry for four years now. Two years as a customer service representative and another two years as a QA. Outside work, I'm a blogger. And of course, I also love reading books. Interesting. What is your blog all about? My blog is basically a guide for call center beginners who want to work in the call center industry but don't have the experience. Uh, in my blog are the tips on how to pass the job interview and the call center test. So, if the goal is eventually to land the job offer. That's cool. You're helping a lot of people. Thank you. And you also like to read books. What kind of books do you read? I used to read self-help books, which are nonfiction. But now I mostly just read fiction books. And my top two favorite genres are murder mystery and fantasy novels. Any books in particular? Uh, for, for fantasy, I love Discworld. It has 41 books, and I'm currently reading the 25th. Uh, and for murder mystery, I read a lot of Agatha Christie's books. They are, for me, they're so mind-blowing, and I just love them. I don't know if you know her, but I yes, really love Yes, I know her. She's a really famous author. Oh, really? I know. She's, she's amazing. You also mentioned that you love fantasy books. What do you love about fantasy books? I love fantasy books because of the nice sceneries and pictures that I imagine when I'm reading them. Um, they help me escape the real world and just have this adventure in my head. And I specifically have that. I'm, I specifically enjoy doing that with fantasy books. Not that I hate the real world, but it's nice to have this kind of place in, in my head that I can just visit whenever I want to and just have this kind of vacation and just see the, that world vividly with my imagination. That's what I love so much about fantasy books. And you mentioned the book Discworld specifically. Could you tell me more about that? I specifically love Discworld because... It's not only magical and funny, but it's also a satire. Uh, the humor, in my opinion, are clever, so cleverly crafted. The author is British, so naturally the, the humor is so British and so dry. And 
The thing is, it's not only funny, but it also tackles serious themes like dealing with loss, coming to terms with death, and accepting oneself, but in a way that is not depressing and a way that is funny. Uh, because my because I really hate books that are depressing. Uh, Stephen King's books, for example, are not my personal favorite. They are so depressingly dark. And although he is a good writer, and a lot of people like his writing, they are not my personal favorite because some of them, some of his books are depressingly dark and sad, and they're just not my cup of tea. So yeah, they make me feel depressed. And my purpose for reading fiction is to escape. So I wouldn't want to escape to a world that's depressing and dark, which is the kind of vibe that I'm getting from his books. So yeah, I, I love this world so much because of that. I love his movie adaptations, though. Oh, and talking about watching movies versus mm -hmm. reading books, which one do you prefer? Well, they're different. I wouldn't want to say that I prefer reading over movies and vice versa because it's like comparing apples to oranges. They both serve different purposes, and movies show vivid images And they also bring the characters into flesh by hiring actors and actresses. That's something that you just cannot have with books. But on the other hand, with books, you also have to use your own imagination and paint the scenery and characters yourself. And for me, that's nice because it is more intimate than watching movies. But I have to say that there are times that I prefer just watching movies over reading books and there are times that I prefer the intimacy with the reading books than watching movies so I don't think there is a real win winner there I, I love both of them interesting that makes me want to read books so where do you buy your books by the way Uh, I own a Kindle, so I was buying them from Amazon. But the other day, I was so happy because I found a way to download them online for free. Uh, well, not all the books that I love, but I found some of the books that I wanted to read for a long time. And I was just so happy that I found that website for free download. I even saw a book from another author that I really like. I think his name oh, is Oh, sorry, Kevin. Candace. I have to stop you right there. I can definitely sense a lot of enthusiasm oh, okay. there, but I have to stop you right there because they're only set for 15 minutes. But we will get back to that later, okay? Is that okay with you? Of, of course, no problem. <laughs> you mentioned that you worked as a CSR and as a QA. Now, could you describe for me the difference between these two positions? Well, when I was a CSR, the majority of what I was doing was to talk and talk to customers. But when I was a QA, most of it was to listen. I mean, I still, I still talk. I, I, I mean, I still listen to customers when I was a CSR. But with, when I was a QA, I can literally go through the whole eight-hour shift without talking. So I think that's the main difference. And although every Friday I... Of course, I had to meet with each call center agent when I was a QA, one-on-one -on -one and talk to them. But other than that, CSR is usually more talking and also a little bit of listening. But QA is usually almost all about listening. So I think that's a big difference between the two. Do you have pets at home? Yes, we have around a dozen cats at home in the province, but we didn't really buy them. I mean, one day they just... Two cats just showed up at our house, and the next thing we knew, they just multiplied, made babies, and now there's a dozen of them living full-time at home. It's just like they decided to just invade the house, and we didn't even have any say about the matter. <laughs> That's amazing. So, now, Candice, can you tell me the direction from your house to your workplace? You mean when walking? Because I usually walk to the, my workplace. Yes, when walking. Okay, so my apartment is just 10 minutes away from my workplace. So starting from the gate of my apartment, you would have to face the road. And then to your left, you walk two blocks until you get to the main road. 
you cannot miss the main road because in the main road is a huge overpass. In that overpass, you will have to walk through that overpass for you to get to the other side of the main road. Uh, and then once on your, once you're on the other side of the main road, you just have to walk one block until you are at the entrance of Gaisano Mall. Again, the mall is huge, so you cannot miss it. And then next, you would have to walk a little bit farther until you get to the farthest side of Gaisano Mall. And then right next to the mall is a gasoline station called Shell. And then right next to the gasoline station is a narrower road. The road is a little, it's a little different from the main road because it's narrower. So what you're going to do is to walk through that road. You just have to walk two blocks straight. And then you'll see intersections after each block. But you just have to ignore them. Just keep heading straight until you're at the corner of the second block. Once you're at the corner of the second block, you will be at the entrance of the restaurant called Bon Appetit. It's a French restaurant. And then right across that restaurant, right across the road, is my workplace. Um, the workplace, my workplace building is blue. There's no sign, but it is the only blue building in the block. And you will know it because there will be a security guard in white uniform at the entrance. So that is the direction going to my workplace. All right, another question. What do you think about recycling? Should we or should we not do it? Yes, absolutely. We need to recycle, not only because it's the right thing to do, but because as humans, we just have no other choice. I mean, we can't live in another, in another planet if we keep destroying our Earth. And so, yeah, definitely, we have to recycle. But I think on top of recycling, we have to do something better. I think we need to come up with ways on how to stop producing plastic and just come up with more sustainable alternatives. Because plastic is just not sustainable. Um, I heard that there are companies who claim that they do recycle plastics, but the truth is not all plastics are recyclable. I saw a documentary the other day saying that not all plastics are recyclable. The ones that are recycled are only the transparent ones, while the colored ones are just not recycled by the companies because they cannot rebrand them, they cannot relabel them. So, yeah, if you think about it, most of the recycling claims are really just mostly scam or misleading. So I'm so sorry. I feel so strongly about this. <laughs> no worries. I understand. I mean, it's not like we cannot survive without plastic. Plastic is not like oxygen or air. And our grandparents, my grandparents personally, were able to survive without plastic because during their childhood, plastic was just not invented yet and they were able to they were able to survive um i also heard a news the other day about the great great barrier reef on in australia and i don't know if you're familiar with it but it is the only living thing on earth that can be seen from the moon it's so huge that it is the only living thing that you can see from the moon and and here's the sad thing about it because of the climate change Half of it has been dead over the past 25 years, and it is continuously dying as we speak. And I think it's just sad that such a beautiful creature could just die because of us. That's a really sad news. It is a sad news. Yes, it is a sad news. By the way, about the books you download for free... What do you think is the difference between buying it and downloading it for free? Uh, well, with the free books, sometimes the formatting, the formatting is a little bit off. Some of the texts are not properly aligned, but they are still readable. But, and of course, you cannot complain because they're for free. Um, and also, another thing that's different with free books is you're not really supporting the author of the book. You're, 
you know, because you're downloading it for free. And most of the free downloads out there are even, even legal, meaning the authors do not approve of them. Although there are definitely best-selling authors that also allow access, free access to their books for free, which is nice. Uh, the books that I usually read are old ones, so they are mostly available for free download online. All right, our 15 minutes is almost up. So, last question. Back to your cats in the province. What are their names? Can you tell me who they are? Oh, we don't really name the cats in the province. I mean, most people do here in the city, but in the province, especially if you have a dozen cats, it's pretty uncommon to name your cats, especially if you, there's a dozen of them. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time, Candice. You're welcome. It's nice talking to you. <laughs> All right. You have a great day. Bye. 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 Now, I gotta tell you, this Berlitz test was conducted by a live person. I heard that there are other types of Berlitz. One type specifically was a Berlitz conducted by a pre-recorded voice. Unfortunately, I have not experienced the Berlitz with the pre-recorded voice, so I cannot make a mock Berlitz about it. And lastly, I also have another video talking about Berlitz. That video is not a mock Berlitz, but it's more of a video talking about what you need to do, what you should prepare for, and what you should expect during a Berlitz test.